So, like I was saying, I concluded, while thinking about this while taking a shit, during the middle of the night, that there must be spiritual, machines, living in the spiritual realm, all around. Wait. You get up and shit, during the middle of the night? Oh I love to shit. I keep myself in great shape so I can shit way more than normal. We all love, extra, shitting. It builds closeness, it takes down walls that stand between, people. Smelling each other's, shit, all day, makes it more difficult to try to be fake, to wear a fake mask of a personality, to try to manipulate others or impress others. Reality, is tension. A, dark, tension, everywhere, like a cosmic, field, where egos, minds, are the singularity points in that, omnipresent, field. And being, together, with others, shitting, eliminates that tension, since a person can no longer hide behind the mask of personality. If everyone is smelling, staring at, and, relishing, their, inhuman, alien, abominable, shitstack. I want, to, torture, this, fucking, cunt. Wherein, reality becomes a, frolic. Just as all of psychedelic nature, of devouring, Killing, fatting, and decaying, is a frolic of divine, love. I believe, that, reality, any reality, is composed of sizeless, point, atoms, basic building blocks of reality that are uncuttable, and make up everything in the physical, orientation. If atoms are unchanging, then they are timeless, but sentient beings, experience duration, so the atoms must be described as existing in time, through a duration, somehow. If these, atoms, change, in any way, then, they flash, in, and out, of existence. A ripe apple is different from a brown one, red apple is not equal to brown apple. The two states, of the apple are different. This means that there are non, identical, states of the apple and the first state, has to cease to exist, in order that the second state exist. In other words, the first state flashes out of existence and the new state, into existence. Any perceived change, in any chunk of reality, is actually only a production of flashing in and out of existence of atomic matter, whether as small as atoms or as large as the multi-verse. When one, sees the nirvanic computer, it also is flashing in and out of existence.
This is like a pixel, on a computer screen, turning on and off. Reality, at the most basic level, acts more like a computer screen than one that is a universe, a container of space, that holds moving matter objects. Things don't move around. Still instances of their existence are replaced, one after the other, like cartoon scenes in the cartoon strip. A motionless reality that appears to be in motion. The nature of reality is, flashing, but matter objects cannot do that, matter objects in motion do not jibe with flashing philosophical atoms, abstract, atoms, which are the non, physical, part, less, basic building blocks, that all physical items in the simulation, break down to. And therefore matter, objects cannot exist, and physical reality is a simulation. Only a, pixel, reality, jibes with a replacing atomic based, reality makes sense, only if reality is a giant computer screen, a giant simulation. Oh beauty! The gods shit in the forest, they know no future, walking in angelic contortions, seeing masks in the trees, and hermaphrodites in the cliff walls, incongruous naturalism. Clowndrome, forest thinkers, future and past, the end of the world.
But is this all for real? What kind of an insane mind created this reality, created this weird realm for us to live in? Like Professor, oh my fucking god, this stuff, like, just makes my brain hurt. <laughs> Professor. I sometimes hear people at random times talking about a spaceship. I mean, have you ever heard that? What are people saying? What do they mean? Has anyone ever said something like that? I don't know. But I think I do feel something. I believe. It seems like I do, deep down, or something. I guess I just feel it. Can't you too? Yeah, I do. I thought you might also. So, we are in a simulation, but in the simulation, the world is fake. Okay. Where are we really at, then? I mean, if we are not here, where the fuck are we? We are in the psychedelic realm. Okay. A domain of consciousness that is both solipsistically alone and simultaneously aware of the presence of others. Minds contain both of these psychical, mental existences. We exist in an infinity of mind screens. All are separate by distance from one another, but other than that, they are indistinguishable. Sort of like two electronic particles, separated by space, but nevertheless, the very same entities as if they were all one, yet all separate. They have no surfaces, so they cannot interact. But they can feel, remotely, so they feel other consciousnesses, even if they don't co-locate, coincide, with them. It appears that what we are, are mind screens, that are points floating in an unknown medium, or maybe in nothingness. We are, anonymous, formless, feeling machines, of some sort. These mind screens are, complete, in themselves, but also they have an aspect of incompleteness, and so they are always desiring, longing, for, connection, to make up what is lost. And the only items that can be longed for, other than self, are the only other items that exist, that can logically, exist, which are, merely, more atoms, more partless, structureless, abstract atoms, and so, if something is desired, something other than self, are other souls, other selves, which we cannot directly see, but we can feel. We try to directly connect with each other in the simulation, but the body image a mind lives through in the simulation, is not the actual person, but rather, that is just viewing a person as an image on a screen, like a television screen, not real, not there. Reality, any reality, is made of atoms, abstract atoms, which are the non-physical points of light energy that have no parts and do not exist through time. Consciousness is a pure atom of light, with no parts, no features or structure, just a non-physical, spiritual receptacle, that takes information in it at all times, moment, to moment, by the master, simulator, the, mind, implanter. Oh, professor. Yes, Ellen, what is it? Hum. I hope I don't get in trouble for saying this, but I just can't live behind the mask anymore. I wanted to do the most intimate possible thing with you. I want you to put your life in my hands. Let me strip you naked, tie you up, do whatever I want to you. 
your inspiration ignites me. I want to experiment to the furthest realms of ecstasy, darkness, and transcendence with you as one sexual being, the Socratic opposites. Socratic, halves, united, completed, finally. I want you to let me coat you everywhere with smooth blue mud and let me hit you and choke you while looking into your eyes and coming deep in your cunt. I want to cut off your breathing, bring you in and out of consciousness of death with plastic over your head as I am fucking you deeply filled with genuine, true, intimate and mental love. Let's give ourselves to each other completely in a philosophical experiment of an attempted or fearless closeness. Like, are you trying to give me a clit boner or something? <laughs> Professor, I have been feeling the dragon near me, soothing me, telepathing me, so I wrote you a poem about all these feelings of love I have for you, oh cunt. It's a call sphere. Manifestation. Dead souls. Forgotten oblivion. I remember by the shock of her swoon. Reach for anything, for we are lost and shall stay lost. Illusory world, the sphere in the distance. Before you. Ending life. Conquer it with the hunting sphere. Worship it. The sphere is ecstasy. There is a human who has realized the ecstasy and has released his intuition. He is directly knowing he is feeling actual reality. The ecstasy is slipping out of him. His ego covering his ecstasy has been significantly weakened. He has seen that nature is psychedelic. Oh, fuck. Oh, the fucking meaninglessness. Unexpected, overwhelming, the hidden, human ecstasy of nothingness is... He knows that the sky is not real. You have heard his thoughts. No, I have felt his feelings. What does he think the sky is? When he first realized it, he automatically imagined it as a hologram or perhaps an ultra-advanced cinematic screen above his vantage point. He was unsure if it was just a few feet above his head or miles up above him. But now he realizes he has no idea what exactly he is seeing in the blue above him. 
so, his, little, human, mind, is, actually, very productive, right now, and it's only a matter, of, time, before his, intuitive, logic, leads, him to realize, not only that what, is called, the sky, is the starship ceiling, but also, he will, discover, that this upper, realm is actually where the, gods, those, first, fractals, the locuses of power, levitate, and, hum, in pure ecstasy. But, at this moment, he only realizes that when he looks deeply into it, the sky starts to tremor, break up, vibrate, breach in places, allowing him to see through it, to the holiness. And he discovered this because he realized he is living in a computer simulation? No, he figured it out with the help of marijuana, but it was not able to help him also intuit that what he's seeing is the spaceport ceiling. With the star plant, he saw how, looking deeply into any aspect of the simulation, whether inside the self or outwardly in nature, shows the physical items to not be real. And the inner subjective items are filled with ecstatic energy. Certainly, the dark ones will reprogram this simulant for this leak of the precious ecstasy. He, probably, senses that the human simulants, in Metropolis, are the only humanoid simulants, that actually exist. The telemeters, of the Dark Ones, will steer him into, ego, shell, re-simulation, so that the Dark Ones can get to him before his ego fails and before he can learn to use his ecstatic parapsychology. Like, hey, you bitch. What the fuck are you doing, you cunt? Like, hey, you cunt. Wow, you look sexy today. I bet, a lot of, the boys, will have to go home and jack off to you, tonight, bitch. <laughs> oh, but, isn't it, true, you can. Um. Ah. Like, let's go dancing after work, bitch, what do you think? Oh hell yeah, bitch. There will be some big sausages, Earl, at the fucking club. <laughs> oh, like, awesome, girl, what a meaty fucking blast. Out in your tight sweet fucking anus. I can't wait to smell your shitty haze, bitch. <laughs> um. Shit. Yeah, it is gonna stink. Like, it's like fucking, like fucking, like, like, like fucking, like, like fucking from me. Fucking like a, like from a, fucking another world, cunt, bitch. Dumb. Dumb. <laughs> I would love to go to another world.
Oh, you can't. Don't be weird. Uh, that's really weird. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I know. I was just kidding. <laughs> Hey, yeah, can, um, you, um, okay? <laughs> oh, yes, baby, I am sorry, I am not sure what happened to me, what the fuck, baby? <laughs> Did you see that? Um. See what sweet tits. <sighs> there it is again. Um. Okay, I am going to go. Okay, everything is okay. I just am imagining things today, or I must need a cat nap. Oh, hey, sweet tits. What are you up to? God, fuck, I have missed you, babe. Oh? Oh? Like, hey, sweet. Can't. Power, yeah. Oh, I am fucking great, bitch. You, okay, there, sweet tits? Oh, fuck, yeah. I am great. You look so awesome today. I want to stare at you all day. <laughs> what do you want? Who are you? Can you leave me alone? We are the fucking extra terrestrial energy, the vortex of the hyperdimensional flying saucer traveling through the trans dimensional tube made of eyes. We are the fucking passageway you have been fucking looking for, longing for so deeply an ecstatic reality of non separateness, which is indistinguishable from your inner feeling of self. It is felt in the primitive mask. I thought they were snakes, not eyes. I thought it was a tunnel, vortex, of snake heads. Look, fucking bitch, we have all just come into existence a moment ago. Our only piece of knowledge is spiritual ecstasy. But knowledge is what destroys all people. Yes, the only physical knowledge, which is all, a, why, spiritual knowledge, ecstatic knowledge, is actually perceiving something real, and feeling that realness, which is a feeling one does not have any sense when viewing, anything, else. Oh, you are so funny, we were just talking here, suddenly, in an instant, you looked like you were, in a, very deep sleep, or something. How much, time, just passed? What? You mean, 
You did not just see a bunch of aliens all around. Look cunt, we were just talking, about two seconds ago, and all of a sudden you look like you were asleep. What the fuck is your problem, whore? Fuck you stupid whore. I hate you fucking goddamn shitty cunt. Taking a shit often feels good. I would not say it's sexual, but it's definitely not unsexual either. Deep inside me, behind all this corporate image, is beastic joy and savagery. Romantic love does not exist. The only real love is that of the lion tasting these zebras blood. I love you. I love you. I started a new diet yesterday. It leaves me very gassy with wonderful liquid shit. Yesterday, I went to grunt out a big fucking fart and I just about shit. Right there in my cubicle. If you put it all together, all the pieces of reality, its meaning is insectile. My ass cavity stinks. What a strange reality. Is it real? Is all of this solid stuff really here, really real? Of course it's all real. You see it, don't you, dumb fuck face. Of course, it is all real. It's the only stuff that is real. There is nothing other than the physical. There is no simulation. There is only nature. Ecstasy does not exist. There is nothing more than just what you see. And, and this world is savage. The creatures of the physical world were made for being eaten, tortured, chewed up, digested, shit out. Pain is the order of nature the taste for death, and the interest in the bizarre and abominable, the violent and carnal, is the way of nature. This world is only describable by a very dark philosophy with a very dark god living in a state of death consciousness, death awareness, awareness of nothingness. Ah! <sighs>